This sermon is titled How to Receive What God Has Provided Part 3 Be enriched as you listen We are going to spend some time in the word of God and so I'd encourage you to keep your bibles open and uh, and uh, spend this time in the word of God We have been talking over the last few weeks on how to receive what God has provided and um, what we have and we will quickly spend a few moments in reviewing what we've covered so far and then we will go forward uh today what we have emphasized in the last few Sundays is that as a believer in the new uh, in Jesus Christ in the new testament what we discover is that god has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings He has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness and um, this has been given to us in Christ in the heavenly realms or in the spiritual realm. So as far as God is concerned in the spiritual realm he has already uh, put to your name or written against your name meaning as a believer every blessing that he would possibly give to his people. And so the apostle paul prayed that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened so that we can know the riches of his inheritance for his saints you know so god wants us to know he wants us to have a revelation of the uh, riches of the inheritance that he's given to his people and it's so important for us to know the word of god and then i'm just uh, say, saying a few things you're not necessarily in the notes here uh, but uh, the apostle paul speaking to the leaders in Ephesians uh, uh, in Acts of the 20 uh, and verse 32 he says I know I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified by faith uh, in Christ so the word of God is what is going to bring us into possessing our inheritance into walking in these things that God has made available to us and that's why we spend time in the word studying the word and learning from the scriptures how to receive the inheritance that God has made available to us and in order to do that we said we are going to look at the life of Abraham because uh the God in his word in Romans chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 he points us to Abraham and he says follow the faith of Abraham walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham and in that same chapter in Romans chapter 4 uh, verses 17 to 21 uh, the holy spirit through the apostle paul has outlined for us the steps of the faith of Abraham you know god already declared Abraham as a father of many nations so as far as god was concerned he had already spoken it it's done exactly the same way for us through Christ and in Christ he said i have blessed you with every spiritual blessing and i want you and me to understand that when jesus christ died on the cross and he he bore our sins he bore our sicknesses and diseases uh, he took upon himself the punishment to bring us shalom when he uh, disarmed the principalities and powers uh, on the cross and he triumphed over satan and and rendered every demonic spirit powerless when he became a curse for us so that the blessing of abraham could be released upon our lives when he shed his blood for our redemption to buy us or to purchase us back as the, uh, uh, into god's family and to bring us out of darkness into the marvelous light of god when he shed his blood so that you and i could live as overcomers over satan and every work of the enemy when he uh, did his a uh, atoning work to bring us into the family of God and make us sons and daughters and heirs and joint heirs with Jesus with himself everything he did on the cross has been made available to you and me freely by grace Jesus didn't die in vain he paid the price so that every blessing that God could give to us through the sacri- sacrifice of Christ has been made available to us uh, in Jesus Christ and it's ours so we are not trying to convince god to give it or we're not trying to you know twist his arm to bless us he's already provided it for us 
through the cross of Jesus Christ. So the, the, what's left is for you and me to learn how to receive by faith. And so we are following what Abraham did in his journey of faith. Now, I want to just share this thought with us. You know, Abraham, in his journey of faith, it really took him 25 years from the time God called him in Genesis chapter 12 to the time he actually, Sarah and he actually had Isaac. 25 years before they saw the fulfillment of that promise. Now, that doesn't mean you and I would have to take that longer time. Abraham had to learn the steps of faith. He didn't have a Bible that he could read. He didn't have, you know, the Holy Spirit. And every believer, every child of God today has, and the Holy Spirit has come to be our personal teacher, and the anointing indwelling us and, and teaching us and leading us and guiding us into all truth. Abraham was not part of a church uh, uh, where, you know, God had appointed people to teach the word and instruct and equip his saints. He had none of that. He had to just learn, you know, uh, through time and through walking with God, what it meant to have faith in God and receive by faith what God had offered to him by grace. And uh, uh, so he made that journey. Now, you and I have a great advantage. We have the written scriptures. We have the Holy Spirit, who is our personal teacher. And we have uh, people in the church, in the body of Christ, who can teach us his word and uh, bring revelation into our hearts. And so we can learn very quickly what it means to have faith in God. And how do we receive by faith what God has given to us. And so if we will pay attention and let these truths sink into our hearts and begin to apply them, practice them in your life, make them a part of your life, grow in these things, uh, you and I will be able to receive what everything that God has made available to us. So let's read Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to 21, and we'll review uh, the first four steps that Abraham took, which we covered in the previous two Sundays. Romans chapter 4, verses 17 21. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. So that was the first step. He believed God. So that's what God calls us to do, to believe him, to believe his word, to believe what he has declared about us in his word. So you find the word of God that speaks towards your present need or that speaks to the situation where you want to see God work and, 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 and find out what God has already done for you. The provision is already made or uh, maybe it's for your family, for your children, for your finances, for your present, for your future, for your mind, for your body, uh, for your emotions, uh, whatever it is, find out that what God has already declared. For instance, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says God has given us a sound mind. A sound mind has a sound memory, a sound concentration, a sound understanding. Uh, so that's a sound mind God has given to you. God has not given to us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, that's already made available to us. So that's yours. So if, you've, you've been, if you're having challenges with your mind, maybe your concentration, your ability to focus, or your uh, things about that you can't remember things, say, no, God has given me a sound mind. I declare that my mind is a sound mind, has a sound memory, a sound concentration, and a, a sound understanding. So you, you, you say, declare that for yourself. You believe God. Believe what God has spoken. The second step, verse 18. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. So that was the second step that we saw. When there was no reason for hope, he still believed. Against all hope, he believed. In hope, he believed. So... Even if things seem hopeless, you and I still believe God. In hope, we believe. We choose to keep our hope up and we choose to believe. The third step, 
that we uh, we saw uh, is in verse 19. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. So here's step three. He did not let his prevailing circumstances and situations weaken his faith. So Abraham was very aware of the condition of his body and Sarah's body. He was very aware of the human impossibility of him and Sarah having a child at that point in time. And yet the Bible says in verse 19, this is what Abraham did. He didn't let his faith weaken by focusing on the impossible natural situation. He did not let the natural situations dictate his faith. Instead, his faith was simply based on what God had said. He believed what God had spoken. So that was a third step. And that's something you and I uh, must learn to do. That we take our eyes off of the circumstances. And instead, we believe God. We do not let the circumstances dictate our faith. But our faith is in God and his word. So what is your situation? Maybe some, somebody could be listening to me who is faced with a mountain of debt. Now, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, encourage anybody to get into debt. But what if right now you're listening to me and you are in that situation? You know, maybe you made several mistakes in life and finances or maybe things went bad and, and you've ended up in the situation. Is it possible for God to bring you out of that situation? Or are you, gonna, are, do, are you doomed to live the rest of your life in that financial situation? Thank God the Bible says that God supplies for all our need. The Bible says that God can make all grace abound toward us. That we always having all sufficiency and all things are able to abound to every good work. Now that's what the word says. And if God spoke it in his word, you embrace it in your heart and say, God, I believe you. First of all, believe God. Second, even though this, my situation is hopeless, in hope, I believe you. I have the hope. I, I, I have expectation that I will come out of this difficult financial situation. And I believe you, God. And third, I'm not going to let this mountain of debt dictate my faith. My faith is in the word and I will believe that God will take me out of this. That God was able to so work in my life that he'll help me clear my debt so that all my debt is canceled, is taken out of the way that I can come into this place where I am living uh, with enough and more finances so that my life is blessed and it will be a blessing to other people. God can do that for you because that's in his word. And I quoted 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. It's there in his word. And that word is relevant to your situation. So, but now you've got to believe it. And don't let your circumstances dictate your faith. Believe it by his word. Because his word says that God will so bless you, he'll so extend grace in you, that you will have, you will be able to abound to every good work. So imagine yourself, envision yourself be in that place where you're not in debt, but you're in a place where you're abounding to every good work. That means you're totally out of debt. All your debts are canceled. It's all gone. But now you're having more than enough to bless other people with. Believe that. Don't let your circumstances dictate your faith. Let the word of God dictate your faith. Right? So these are the first three steps that we covered. And we're going to go forward from there. The next verse. That's verse number 20 gives us step four. What did Abraham do? It says, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So verse 20, the first part of that verse is step number four. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. He didn't waver, you know, 
James puts it like this in James chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. It's a very nice uh, picture, imagery James picks up, James uh, brings for us. He says, he's talking about asking in faith. He says, let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the law. So the word wave in Romans 4.20 is the same word used in James chapter 1 verse 6 where he talks about doubting. It's the same Greek word. In one place it says he did not waver or he did not doubt the promise of God. That same Greek word is translated in James 1.6 as doubting. So to waver really is to be in a place of doubt. And the Greek word actually means to be divided in your mind. It is, you're at dispute within your own mind. That means your, your mind is divided. You're going in two different directions. You're at variance with yourself. Or sometimes we would say, hesitate. Or you're in doubt. So he did not doubt the promise of God through unbelief. He didn't wave at the promise of God through unbelief. He didn't, he wasn't divided, he wasn't in two minds about the promise of God through unbelief. So, what's he telling us here? He's saying that unbelief can put us in this place of wavering at the promise of God. Unbelief. And uh, Unbelief can come from so many different sources. Sometimes this, this thoughts of unbelief can come from our own minds. Because remember we said in the very beginning, the very first message, that faith is of the heart and it is the evidence of things not seen. That means faith is being convinced it's having this conviction of what our mind is not able to perceive. It is not perceptible to our mind. And so obviously your mind is going to be questioning these things. But that doesn't mean you cannot have faith. Because faith is of the heart. With the heart, man believes. And that believing is even the things unseen. So your mind obviously is going to question so don't be surprised if sometimes the unbelief or the thoughts of unbelief or the thoughts of doubt actually spring up from your own mind. It's normal because the mind can't figure it out. And you're believing the word of God. God's word says it. The mind may not be able to figure it out. The mind understands what God's word says, but I can't figure out how that's going to happen. But you still believe because God is much bigger than our minds. And so sometimes this unbelief comes from our minds. But I want us to remember that you and I can have faith in our hearts even when our minds do not understand or do not comprehend or like we say, we can't wrap our mind around it. It's okay. God is not expecting you to wrap your mind around Him. It's never going to be able to do it. But you can believe. You can have faith. That's possible. So, when these, there will be, or there will be, or there may be times when your mind has doubts. But that doesn't mean you don't have faith. Because faith is of the heart. And you don't have to let, like Abraham, verse 20, you choose not to wave at the promise of God. Just because there, is, there are these thoughts of unbelief in your mind, you can choose not to waver. I'm repeating this. This is very important. You can choose not to waver at the promise of God, even if there are thoughts of unbelief in your mind. Why? Because your heart, in your heart, you're choosing to believe. So example, if we go back to that situation about finances, you know, this person who's in debt, his mind is going to question. 
There is, there is no way you're going to be able to come out of this debt. Where are you going to get the money from? Let's say you know, you're in debt of 15 lakhs or whatever that amount is. It could be 5 lakhs, 1 lakh, 10 lakh, whatever. You know, let's say a person is in debt for that amount of money. And the mind obviously is going to question, where are you going to get the money from? But the heart says, God said in his word that he will make all grace abound toward me so that I having all sufficiency in all things will be able to abound to every good work. God said in his word that if I speak to the mountain and I tell the mountain to move, it will move and nothing will be impossible to me. So I'm speaking to that mountain of debt and I'm telling it to move out of my way. How is it going to move? That's up to God. I have to believe. And so, there are thoughts of unbelief, but you make a choice. I will not doubt the promise of God. I will not wave at the promise of God. I'm not going to be divided about the promise of God. No, I have faith in the promise of God. Now, sometimes... The unbelief could come through, from, come, come through well-meaning people around us. You see, we have friends, we have people around us, and not everybody is tuned in to the word of God. They may, not, they may be believers in the sense that maybe they're born again, but maybe they don't know what you know about the word. Maybe they don't know what you know about God. They may not have that same revelation. So don't assume that just because somebody's born again, they have the same spiritual understanding as you have. They don't. They may not. Or there could be other friends who are not believers. And so they may say things, and they may say it out of the sincerity of their heart, but they could be sincerely wrong. They could say things that create doubt in your mind. Because they're looking at it a very, very logical way. They may be believers, but they don't have the same spiritual understanding. They may not believe that God is really Jehovah, Jireh in our day and time. They may think that the days of miracles are over. It only happened in Bible times. But today, God doesn't do miracles. He's retired. He doesn't heal the sick. He doesn't answer prayer. But you believe that faith in God today works the same way as in Bible times because God hasn't changed. I believe that. I believe that faith in God today works the same way as in Bible times because God hasn't changed and His Word hasn't changed. So faith will do the same things that it happened in Bible times. If a woman with an issue of blood came and touched Jesus in faith and she was healed, I believe today we can touch Jesus in faith and be healed. I believe that. Now, some other person who is also a believer, born again, may, may not believe that. And so sometimes people around us could speak things and say things to us, which when we hear it in our minds, it could create doubt. But that's when you have to make a choice. Like Abraham, verse 20, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. The moment you hear them say something, it may spark unbelief. It may trigger thoughts of doubt. It may trigger thoughts of fear. And maybe they paint some pictures of, you know, uh, bad things happening. You know, but that's when you say, I will not waver at the promise of God. Because God's word is truth. God is watching over his word to perform it. God's word is God's covenant to me and his covenant he will not break and he will not alter the thing that's gone out of my lips. Heaven and earth will pass away, but his words will never pass away. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Nothing will change it. And so I will not waver at the promise of God. A third source of doubts and unbelief, of course, is from the enemy, the devil. The devil is very faithful to come and cause, uh, you know, throw in thoughts of doubt and unbelief in your mind. And sometimes it's the enemy just throwing in those thoughts of fear and thoughts of doubt and thoughts of unbelief, trying to cause you to waver at the promise of God. Now, you cannot prevent those thoughts from coming. 
but you can prevent them from robbing your faith. You choose not to waver at the promise of God through unbelief. So the enemy can throw his thoughts of doubt and fear and unbelief and sometimes these imaginations of all kinds of bad things happening. But you say, no, this is the word of God. So what should we do? We should quench the fiery darts of the enemy with the shield of faith. Ephesians 6 and verse 16 says, take the shield of faith with which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So now... The very faith that's in your heart, you put it out like a shield. Because it says, take the shield of faith. And so the fiery darts of doubt and unbelief and fear and questioning. Did God really say that he will meet your needs? Did God really say he's the God who forgives sins and heals diseases? Did God really say that by the stripes of Jesus you were healed? Did God really say that if you speak to the mountain and tell it to move, it will move? Did God really say that your steps are ordered by the Lord? Did God really say that he will never leave you nor forsake you? Did God really say that his angels will protect you? That's how the devil speaks. But you put your shield out and say, yes, God really said. My God will supply all my needs. Yes, God truly said that the Lord is my shepherd. I will not be in want. Yes, God truly said he gives his angels charge over me and he keeps me in all of my ways. Yes, God truly said. That's your shield of faith. The faith that's in your heart. You now speak it out and it will become a shield around you. And Ephesians 6 and verse 16 says the shield of faith will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You know, the picture there is of fiery darts. And uh, what the Apostle Paul has in his mind is soldiers shooting those arrows, but those arrows are not ordinary arrows. Those arrows have have, have been set on fire. So, you know, they're flame, flaming arrows. They're, you know, they've been... Uh, lighted and they are shot. So not only are they sharp, but they also have fire, meant to destroy, double destructions. Now that so that you know, and, and, and Paul is saying, you know, you put your shield of faith outside, and the enemy can shoot his fiery darts, but your shield of faith will quench, will extinguish, will nullify all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So he can do it, but you've got your shield of faith. And you're going to quench all of those fiery darts. So I want to encourage you. Be like Abraham. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. And one of the key things you and I must learn to do is to confess our faith. Why? Because when you speak your faith, when you confess your faith, it is you putting up your shield of faith. Right? And that shield of faith is going to quench every fiery dart. And you know, the Bible teaches us that Jesus is the apostle and high priest of our confession. The word apostle means to represent. He, repre- he, he goes on behalf of. And he's a high priest. That means he intercedes. He represents. He speaks on behalf of. And so when we confess our faith, Jesus is the apostle and high priest of our confession. And the Bible teaches us to hold fast the confession of our faith. Hebrews 4 and verse 14. Hold on to the confession of your faith. Don't go back on it. Don't quit. Hold fast to the confession of your faith. You are like Abraham. Do not waver at the promise of God. We're going to look at one more a step of Abraham's faith before we close. And that's also in verse 20. In the latter part of verse 20, he says, He was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So this is step number five. What happened to Abraham? He became strong in faith by praising God. He was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So what do you do? As you are believing God and saying, God, I want to receive what you've provided. And I believe it's mine. This is the promise of God. What must we do? We can become strengthened in our faith. Our faith can become strengthened as we 
give glory to God as we give praise to God. So you become stronger in faith by praising God. By praising God. Now, praising God or giving Him thanks. You know, in, the, in normal, normal situations, after we receive something, we say thanks. Now, in, when it comes to these spiritual matters, we have received them spiritually by faith. And that's why we are able to say thanks even before you receive it in the natural. Because in the spiritual, it's done. That's step one. You believe God. You say, God, I receive it. So what do you do? You give thanks. It's done. You give thanks. Even before you receive it in the natural. So Abraham was strengthened in faith as he gave praise to God, as he gave glory to God. So you and I begin to thank God ahead of time. Say, Father, I thank you. It's done. So example, going back to the example of that person who must, who's in a financial need. You say, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that my debts are clear. That I am living a life that's debt free. That my mountain of debt has been moved out of the way. And that God, you have provided and you have cleared my debt. And I thank you that you bring me into this place where I live life debt free. And that God, I have enough for myself and more than enough to bless other people with. You start thanking God for it. You say, how can I do that? Because I still owe that money. Yes, you still owe that money. But this is a step of faith. You are being strengthened in faith as you give glory to God. And you can do that because by faith, you have addressed the matter. And so between you and God, you praise Him. You give Him thanks. Even before you're actually seeing it. So you give thanks to God and praise God in advance for that situation. Maybe for some of you, it's your family situation. So you begin to thank God. Father, I thank you that my home is a blessed home. This very moment, maybe there is a voice of strife and confusion. But you say, Father, I thank you that according to your word, in the house of the righteous, there is the voice of rejoicing and salvation. How are you doing it? You're doing it by faith. And you'll be strengthened in faith as you give praise to God. And you're doing it by faith. You're acting your faith. You're putting your faith muscles to work, so to speak. And as you're praising God in advance, you're being strengthened in faith. You're giving thanks to God. So Father, I thank you that there's peace and joy and blessing in this home. Father, I thank you as for me and my house, we serve the Lord. Father, I thank you that uh, as for me, my spouse, and my children, we are for signs and for wonders among the nations from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. That's Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18. And Lord, I thank you that you pour out your spirit upon my seed and your blessing upon my offspring. And you begin to declare and you give thanks to God ahead of time based on his word. And like Abraham, you are strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. You know, and there are numerous examples in the Bible in, in 2 Chronicles 20 uh, verses 22 23, we hear about an army going out, giving praise to God, even before the actual battle could take place. They were praising God. And God moved. And he took care of the battle. Think about Paul and Silas in Acts 16, when they were in, in the, the uh, uh, they were thrown into prison. The Bible says there that Paul and Silas were singing, praying and singing hymns to God. Now, they were not complaining about the fact that they were in the prison, in a prison, but they were praising God. So that means they were expressing their faith in God, that God is their protector, their defender, their deliverer, and then deliverance came. So, step number five. Give praise to God, and you'll be strengthened in your faith. And praise Him before even the blessing is made visible. So let's quickly review the first five steps. We will continue this next Sunday. And we will con conclude with the last two, the seven steps of Abraham's faith. How he received from God. 
And this is the same way that you and I receive for our lives what God has promised. First, verse 17, Abraham believed God. For him, it settled. God spoke it. I'm starting there. Second, he in hope believed. Against all hope, in hope he believed. He believed even when, they, when, when it looked hopeless. Third, we do not let circumstances dictate our faith. No, we look at the word, not at the circumstances. Fourth, which we learned, which we discovered today, we refuse to waver. We refuse to waver at the promise of God. Unbelief might come knocking at the door, but faith always answers. Every time unbelief comes knocking, faith answers. Every time unbelief comes knocking, no matter where the source of the unbelief, faith answers. We refuse to waver at the promise of God. And number five, we become stronger in faith as we praise God, even before we see things change in the natural. So we are doing it by faith, and our faith is going to be strengthened as we praise Him, as we give Him thanks, even before we see things change. So I want you to, I want you to really take these things to heart. This is not just a sermon we are preaching to you on a Sunday morning, but these are things we've been living by for years. And I want you to know that faith in God produces the way the Bible tells us it will produce. That God is drawn to faith in the hearts of his people. And uh, he will respond to the faith and he will cause things to take place in your life. So we're going to pray together. The worship team will lead us in a few moments of worship and then I'll be back. And we're going to pray together. And during that time of prayer, I want you to just go through these five steps that we have outlined from here uh, that we see in, 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 in the life of Abraham. Steps that God wants us to take because he tells us that we should walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham. Let's take a few moments to worship and then let's pray together. on feels like my hope is gone but I will choose to look to you I come as I am with no strength to stand and God I choose to lean on you and I stand in your victory your promises surrounding me, I know, I know I'm my side. So I'll sing of your love for me, your grace and mercy follow me. I know, I know you're by my side. Yahweh, you are fine. Yours is the victory It seems impossible To make the sun stand still But miracles are what you do It seems impossible To make the sun stand still but miracles are what you do oh, Impossible is what you do Power, your 
Jesus is the victory. No matter what I've been through, the battle belongs to you. No matter what I've been through, the battle belongs to you. No matter what I've been through. belongs to you yes it does your faithfulness Lord no matter what I've been through the battle belongs to you and I'll stand in your victory your promises surrounding me I know you're by my side and I sing of your love for me Your grace and mercy follow me I know, I know you're by my side Yahweh, you are fighting for me Yahweh, you're my sword and my shield is my battle cry and yours is the power yours is the glory yours is the victory Yahweh Yahweh ancient one yet you're here today for us Let's join our hearts together in prayer. I want you to believe God with me. Doesn't matter what your situation is, there's a promise in the Word of God. There's something in the Word of God that addresses your life situation. And I want you to take a hold of that. Believe God, believe His Word. And even if it, it seems hopeless, believe God, because there's nothing impossible for Him. Don't let the circumstances dictate your faith. Refuse to waver, even when unbelief comes knocking at your mind. And, and, and get stronger in faith by just praising God and thanking God. Will you thank God today for the answer? Will you thank God that He has made the provision and you thank Him as though it's yours today? It may not be there in your hands physically, but spiritually you have received it. And you just thank Him for it. Let's do that before we close. Father, we turn our eyes towards you. And God, I pray with all of these people, uh, God, who are connected this morning, who are listening, uh, different situations. And I want to thank you for your word being fulfilled in their lives. I thank you, God, for every person, uh, God, who's, who's looking to you for healing. And I thank you according to your word that by the stripes of Jesus, we have been healed and we thank you for healing we thank you for provision coming through in our lives because your word says that our god shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory through jesus christ and that word is fulfilled father we thank you for every home experiencing the goodness of god that there is the voice of rejoicing and salvation in every home, in every marriage, in every family, we thank you that your word is fulfilled in our homes. We thank you for your hand upon our children. And we say as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We declare your word over our children, that all our children are taught by the Lord and they have great shalom. I speak shalom even over the children who might be oppressed and troubled and disturbed. But we say all of that leaves and the shalom of God comes into their lives, into their minds. We declare total well-being 
in their lives, Father, according to your word. And Father, we speak blessing upon the workplaces that your word says that whatever we do will prosper, that the works of our hands are blessed. And we thank you for that taking place, oh God, in our workplaces, in our places of work. We thank you. We thank you for people being surrounded by favor as with a shield so that wherever they go the favor of God surrounds them and they are highly favored before God and man and the favor of God gives them access to unusual opportunities the favor of God gives them access to people and places that they would not have otherwise had that the favor of God causes provision to be poured into their hands because they are highly favored we thank you for doing that God and Lord, we thank you for blessing people in every area of their lives. And we do this, Father, by faith in Jesus' name. Because you're a good God and your word is true. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's close with a benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.